Uh, you, you mentioned this living in fear, and yeah. even myself, I only was there until age 18. Right. But I look back on my childhood growing up out there, and you're right, I felt like, oh no, this is what I want. I'm so happy, I'm so blessed to be elite and a part of this small group that's the only truth and has the only truth. And now I look back and realize, like, I was afraid all, almost my entire life yeah. because of the way we were raised, yeah. that, that if you don't do exactly what you're told, all these awful things could happen yeah. to you. Yeah. And because of that, my fear, I even put that in my kids even more so than, I mean, mm -hmm. that was a goddamn saint. <laughs> you yeah. know, I was like... <clears throat> Yeah, because you had to be. I had to be. Mm -hmm. yes. To save your family, and, and you're going to do anything for your and family. And then, like I said, it had already come before as a child. I, I had to be perfect well, for my mom. It, it's so much but, more than just our immediate family, though. It was literally our relatives and friends and everything. And if you didn't um, do exactly what they said, you would lose your whole culture and everything. And you would right. be out there all alone with no help whatsoever, no friends whatsoever, and nothing that you knew. It would literally be like being taken to the Antarctica or somewhere and dropped off where it is really cold and terrible, which is pretty much what our view of the so-called world was. Right. Yeah. It's really cold and terrible and you're going to freeze to death. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just so sad, but that's, that's, that's the reason we fought so hard to stay in it right. yes. and to, right. to be obedient. Right. And not to mention what we were promised would happen to us in the afterlife right. if Correct. we weren't obedient, right? That's a whole other topic. Yeah. Uh, we so. would have to be go through the second death and our yeah. spirit would be killed and yeah. it just wouldn't exist anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Very so, frightening. Yeah, I think for me that at, at, you know, in early years with my first kids, it was like that. I wanted to be good enough for salvation, but I think it slowly became good enough for Warren. It really was. Absolutely. It's, it definitely, I mean, I can't even tell you exactly when that turned over, but it definitely became that very, very quickly and early on. It took my kids, their whole life was just to be good enough for Warren. Yeah. Wow. That seemed to be the, yeah. the whole idea out yeah. there. Be good yeah. enough for Warren, dress like yeah. Warren, yeah. talk yeah. like, act like. Right. Basically, yeah. he's a godlike figure in our mind, right. in our yes. eyes. Definitely. He was that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then he started saying stuff like God and the prophet only and always do right. So now he's equal with God. Mm -hmm. And it was him yeah. putting that into us. Yeah. Wow. How long was it after your family was reunited that Warren became the prophet and all of that? We always just say like the craziness, the craziness of Warren really took over. Because you're saying even during that time, Rulin Jeff's, Warren was speaking for Rulin, right? Mm -hmm. During that separation for your family. Do you remember how much longer two it was? Years. So it was two years after that. What were some things, because you're continuing to have children, you're continuing to grow your family and living out there. What were some major changes that affected your family when Warren took over? So one of the main first things was when he said, we are doing a school exodus and said, we're not going to go to public school anymore. We're going to do homeschool and it's going to be, it's going to be so much better. And Look at Alta Academy and how we did this, and our students are just so much smarter. And so we're going to have way smarter, better students by doing it this way. And and the reality of it is, is that being a mom who is a mom and trying to be the school teacher and everything, it, it had the exact opposite effect where there was a lot of, sad to say, pretty dumb kids that went through life not understanding school like... I mean, like you and me, Melissa, we went to school, we got taught a lot better than a lot of these poor kids. We should point out that you said Alta Academy, that was the school that Warren Jeffs was the principal of, is that correct? correct? Yes. So just to point out, he was bragging up his own school, basically. Right. Correct. Yes. Right. And came out and promised that the whole community would have their kids, children, <laughs> mm -hmm. train, or being able to be schooled in top schools. I, I never ever had the schooling I needed for my kids. Mm -hmm. I, I look back and I'm so angry. I'm like, that big promise was just blown in the wind. Right. I, you know, because I wasn't one of the elite families. There may be some families that the kids did get a little more schooling, but I was a mom on my own, teaching my own kids, surviving on my own, as far as schooling them, bringing them up. I mean, 
Jeff was there a lot for me, so well, I'm not saying so without him, but he was at working. At the same time, so much responsibility. Um, this is right around the same time that Warren started doing the work project stuff on yeah. Saturday. So mm -hmm. um, if I was out in the world, so to speak, working my self to death day and night trying to bring in enough money to support my family now on Saturdays I can't do normal um, outings with my families and normal fix up the house normal things I would normally do because now I have to devote all of my Saturday time and weekend time to priesthood projects and helping someone else which hey yeah. that's nothing wrong with helping other people I love to do it yeah. but when it becomes the norm and you're, it basically just robs you of all of the resources to be with your family and do stuff with your family and for your family or and sleep. for, <laughs> yeah, or even sleep yeah. because a lot of times I was out driving truck and I did got very little sleep because we could do that back in those days mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> I'd come home on the weekend and I wouldn't get any sleep because I'm supposed to go to these Saturday projects and work and, all day long. And then I became forceful with it or, you know, nagging, I'd say, because I was just like, you've got all the projects. I mean, we were constantly being told in the meetings, if you're not at those projects and at these meetings, you're, yeah, so you're at. So now we're starting to live on uh, less and less sleep, like, and then things change too, where, okay, now you have to have these morning classes, and you have to have everybody up at 5 o'clock, and yeah. you have to have class at a certain time, and he set the schedule for us, and, and at nighttime, at a certain time, you're supposed to have class, and, and it just got harder and harder and harder and harder and when you say class you're referring to scripture time and prayer yes. and, and, and that type of like yeah. get the family together and preach them yeah yes. not, not schooling correct. class right. Right. spiritual class yes, yes correct. Exactly. and not only that it was the little children you would have your three-year-old sitting there perfectly still listening mm -hmm. to readings for hours yeah. and I, it's not just preaching a better way to put it would be you've got to gather them together and indoctrinate them into the way i want them to learn yep which yes. literally, as time progressed, made it so that my older kids would were indoctrinated in the church and would have turned us in, so to speak. And we could have lost our family because now we have to watch what we do around our kids because they might turn us in. Right. Or they might interpret what we're doing as um, worthy of being reported, and then we could lose out just because of that. So it, was, it got worse and worse and worse, so to speak. And now we're not only um, watch, trying to watch our own backs, but we're trying to make sure we don't do anything that our kids or our children would interpret as we did something wrong. On top of that, it got worse than harder because um, Warren not only had all these classes and these strict schedules and things that he was doing, but he started the member, non-member thing oh, where he yes. said, okay, well, back up a little bit. Um, he said he had this great revelation, so to speak, from the Lord that said that we are going to have a time of jubilee and everybody should bring forth all of their sins and we're, the Lord's going to forgive everybody and it'll be just a great jubilee and we're all going to redo our, our covenants and everything. We're going to re, re get rebaptized. We'll, we'll yeah, all renew our um, wow. priesthood covenants, everything, everybody in the church and have this great jubilee and we'll just start afresh and start anew. So this must have been after Warren was imprisonated at this point, no. right? No, this was before. He was, he, this was before? Yes. Oh, interesting. So I was still out there then Correct. during this time. Yes. I don't remember the rebaptizing. I think he was on the run. You weren't there. Though. Yes. Huh. He was on the run. Okay. But okay, kind but of interesting to note about him being on the run. A lot of people talk about him being in hiding. Me as a family, and I know there was a lot of other families this way, I had no idea he was on the run. I had no idea that he was hidden. I mean, he, oh, wow. he didn't appear. He didn't come to some of the meetings. But what I was being told and what I understood was that he was trying to get his own family prepared mm -hmm. for the coming events which were supposed to well, you know and the ranch and had been built his, right yeah see i had we didn't so you guys were used to not seeing him all the time if he was back well, and forth between the we ranch didn't, and... we didn't know the ranch was built either we had no idea about all we knew was that um there no. was people that were disappearing where where so well, and they, they were, were going somewhere to but, build up zion yeah, correct that's, up zion, what, yeah. that's what correct. we were told but we had no clue where we weren't supposed to be on the internet mm -hmm. Right. We weren't supposed to be looking. So for Warren to disappear when he went in prison at first, I actually didn't know. I think it was almost all year before I knew. Really? He went to prison. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. See, I, I heard right away when he was when yeah. he was caught 
yeah. in, here in Las Vegas, actually. I, I heard for some reason almost immediately that that happened. Yeah, it was a year later and I was like telling my sister happy birthday and she's like, well, I don't really celebrate it now that they took Warren on the day of my birthday, I, which I didn't ever respond to because I was like, wow. well, I didn't even know that. I didn't even have any idea. And then, of course, we were made to believe once we found out that it was trumped up against him. He hadn't done anything. He was perfectly innocent. And they had trumped up something against him. Of course. And it was so easy to just go to the courts and trump up something against somebody and put them in, put well, them down. Well, and the other thing wow. <laughs> that we were told was that um, the courts sided with all non-believers yeah. and who we were told were apostates, so to speak. And the courts just did everything that they said. And uh, us being FLDS, then we were in danger of false imprisonment, false charges being brought against us because the court always just followed everything that these non-believers wanted. And we were right. made to believe it was just so easy for them to just go to the oh, courts yeah. and turn anybody in. Hmm. Well, Which we know is absolutely <laughs> not true because right. we've absolutely been, not. what, six years attempting to try to get the courts, um, even some law enforcement to help us get some prosecution to happen for the very terrible injustice that has happened and abuse that's happened to our kids. And I don't want to fault any one person. There's a lot of good law enforcement people out there. So I'm not anti-government or anti-law enforcement, but unfortunately it is absolutely not true because we have not been able to get any justice or any help or even be able to get our case before the courts even to this day. And mm -hmm. it has been since 2017 when we got our kids back that we've been attempting to do that. And I've gone, I won't mention agencies or who, but I've gone to every possible place and area that I possibly could to try to get some help and haven't had that happen wow. yet, which wow. we hope that sometime in the future we will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you go from thinking that it's all a conspiracy against Warren, right? right. And it's and only right. because he's, it's yeah. only because he's the prophet, right? And the LDS has a history yeah. of, and we saw this a lot, and Sam talks about, where Warren would say that he was just like Joseph Smith yeah. that was right. imprisoned, exactly. and now if anything happens to him, he will be a martyr. And, you know, yeah. going back to a lot of the LDS church yeah. history before the breakoff happened, they were persecuted and the law hated them, and yeah. it just continues to confirm why you guys are right, right and you're righteous and you're doing God's will because God's people are supposed to be peculiar and they're supposed to stand out against the world and yeah. they're supposed to be persecuted. And it's not supposed to be easy. It's, it's supposed not supposed to be, to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. Exactly. exactly. So you have it, to prove and yourself. And so these are all self-fulfilling prophecies. Yeah. Major faith builders. Yeah. yeah. We are on the right path because all this terrible stuff is happening yeah. to our prophet and to everybody and wow and how terrible is it that these um, unbeliever, non-believer people can go and do all this terrible stuff to us, it just proves that we're right. Because yeah. we are different than the whole rest of the world, so therefore we're right and we have the one true God and those poor souls out there, they just don't have anybody, but heck with them because hmm. Hmm, yeah. we're just the one true guys and they, they, you know, we don't convert people anymore, so then, you know, we're sad for yeah. them, but yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to make it nobody else is. Yeah. Well, around the same time, he Warren set up what he called missionaries, and he had the young boys. I mean, they could be anywhere from 12 years old to 16 year olds come and preach to the families. And basically, that is what it is. That you know, I remember that being one of their main testimonies. Is that Warren must be the prophet? He is because look at the whole world. So they had missionaries, yes. but it was only to people who are already members. No, it was. Or did they proselyte at, as well? At first, it was everybody. So right. there was so many different um, changes at different times, but at first missionaries came to everybody, but they were strictly told exactly what to say. They would go and meet. They were told what they could say. I mean, I went there. Maybe Sam had a little more experience with that. I, I, I never progressed beyond the office of deacon in the priesthood. Okay. So I was never a missionary because you had to be oh, a okay. teacher at least. Yeah. But I do remember them coming to my house. Yeah. 
And when you say they were going to everybody, you mean everyone that was FLDS, yes, right? Yes, everybody. Else. Because Jeff right, mentioned <laughs> Jeff mentioned that uh, Warren started creating the members and non-members, right? right. And Which that's something we need to so get this was into. After, yeah, exactly. So yeah. the 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 missionaries though was a step in that direction right. because for me, for the missionaries so called to show up, they are looking. You got to look over your shoulder and make sure. Okay, you know it. What kind of pictures do I have in my home? Is somebody going to construe something I say while the missionaries are here? Am I going to be reported as a bad person and be? Yeah. Um, they were basically the most have my family sacrifice. taken away. Mm -hmm. So it, it created a whole another set of fear, so to speak, yeah. at least in the back of your mind. Um, well, and so it was another series of report. controls over yeah. everybody. They were definitely coming into the home to yes. report. They were told exactly what to watch. So what missionaries slash spies. Yeah, there you go. Yes. To be able to exactly Warren's, Warren spies called oh, missionaries. Yeah, yeah that's And what so, it was. like for me, a lot of the things, one of the things that I had for um, my children as they were growing up is I loved to do home videos. And so we had tons of home videos of the little babies. And it was so fun because the our littler kids then they're oh yeah i remember you know the older the oldest brother uh, brother and the oldest sister when they were babies and they I remember her learning to walk and we're like and they talked yes. about that as if they were there even though they hadn't even been born yet and yeah. so i'm just saying if, if i would have had i did have one tv and one video player that i could play those videos if i would have had that in the living room where the missionaries came automatically i mean you're going to lose your family you're done yeah. and nobody would have bothered to investigate what are you watching on that yeah. when in my case that was all that i was watching if we even did and it got to the point where we got rid of all tvs and got rid of everything but we still had the videos and the materials that we had taken of all of our younger kids and even came to the point where we had um, eventually condensed that way down because there's so much bad stuff that we weren't as good of people back then as we are now and we have to take all this out so we condensed a lot of it down and just got little bits and pieces of it here and there. Wow. Wow. How sad that something like just having a TV monitor in your living room could, could force you out and and destroy your family, exactly. completely right. split you up. Well, and then you're losing thousands of friends. I mean, mm -hmm. there was 5,000 people, and mm -hmm. we knew each other. We were a community, a close-knit friends and family, and so you lost all of that. It was more than just family. It was like a whole community and a whole and culture was, that you lose. Wow. You know? And he was pitting them against each other, oh, correct? Definitely. Like the members yes. and the non-members separation yes. and well, so even creating these people that, are on actually. a pedestal. Yeah. yeah. What, what did being a member and a non-member look yeah. like? So and let's get... Let's talk about missionaries quick because here okay. became oh, yeah. our 12-year-old son that has barely turned 12 years old. And now he's going to priesthood meeting because he's a member and his own dad is not a member so he has no priesthood. And now he became the captain and the leader of the home. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. I am the big man here, and I know. And then he couldn't go up to priesthood meeting, and I was down sick with babies, and so we'd let our 12-year-old drive our vehicle across town. How did they choose? Go to meeting, you know? Uh, yeah, that's good. <sighs> what was the process like being told that you were a member or a non-member? How did they make that decision? Did they tell you that there was a certain way that the decision was made? Oh, and what was it actually question. like in reality? They made us Good believe question. that it was completely God's choice, okay. whether you were or not. And originally, as they started into it, they said, and this was after the so-called Jubilee, but now they said, okay, now everybody has to come up and be judged whether you are going to be a member or a non-member. And so now everybody had to go up and see Lyle and go to an interview, and that is how they started it. And if you passed your interview and Lyle decided, or he, you would be called after, it wasn't like he just told you right after always, um, in my case, I guess he decided that I was a non-member for whatever reason, right after my interview. All of a sudden, my family got called in the middle of the night and they snuck out and went and um, became members because in order to become a member, you have to be baptized to be a member again. So this was after we renewed our covenants and supposedly there was this great jubilee and everybody was forgiven and, and there wasn't anything bad or wrong that I had done between the jubilee to now I'm a non-member. It's just that 
Yeah. It wasn't a true jubilee. It was a, oh, yeah, if we find out some stuff about you and then we're going to use that against you, which is honestly, it feels like that's what happened. That because, is what happened. Wow. So that is because what happened is they had us write those letters and then we were all rebaptized and we were told everything's forgiven. You know, it's like the time when Jonah comes to the city and everything's, the, you know, all their sins are forgiven. They're, we can move on now. But then we were also told, you, you know, now you send another letter. And if you, there's anything you left out, everybody left something out. You tell us what you left out. And then some people like, for me, I personally wrote down anything I could think of, you know, where could have I possibly been bad? God, one side probably wasn't very sweet to one of my kids. Or so they were confession, sweet confession was, letters. Yeah, so it right. was definitely yes. a confession letter. And then sure. I get that back. I had someone personally come from the bishop's office and say, you were, you were not fervent enough. You have nothing in this letter. You've got to be more fervent. And so I'm just sitting there thinking, what the heck could have happened in my life? I mean, I, I just reach into the deepest to think, okay, you know, something bad must happen somewhere. And wow. literally to the point where I'm like, okay, hey, maybe I did something that I didn't know I did. And so I had to rewrite that. Basically, they had to have something that they could say, okay, now we can hold you down with this. Right. Wow. Isn't yes. that crazy? And that's how they worked. They worked by creating this fear that God knew everything. Yep. Yep. And that Warren, therefore, knew everything because God was speaking to him. But they would force you to tell them what it was. Right. Mm -hmm. You could go to right. any random citizen and tell yeah. them they did something wrong, and there's right. going to be something they can find in their life that wasn't yeah. good. Absolutely. Well, and for me, then I took on the guilt of, uh, as a child, I was sexually assaulted, and I took the guilt on from that and took it as like, okay, hey, I have sinned now. Well, you know, you look back and you go, there is no way. No, you're a victim. That I was a victim. <laughs> you know, and, well, that's, and that's what it became. The reality going, you of know. the whole thing was is we all became victims yeah. of Warren. Yeah. And he used that victimization for his, what I believe was his ultimate goal. And he had this terrible, whatever you would call it, his desire to get with young, really extremely young girls. And I think that's... You get the father, get rid of the fathers. You get rid of the dads. You get you separate the families, and now you can do whatever you want with the kids. Yeah. And all of the kids started being trafficked because member non member and families getting ripped yeah. apart. And there is nobody that is going to love kids like their parents. Yeah. No doubt, there's bad parents out there that yeah. don't care about their kids. But we cared about our kids. At least I did. Yeah. So I know yeah. I did. Yeah. Not to jump ahead there, but then immediately they put me as a member and him as a non-member and a few of the kids were non-members at the time at first so it there was so many different changes it's hard to remember them all but they sent there was somebody sent over from the bishop's office specifically to talk to me and Jeff and I later I found out there's a few other families but not a lot I thought everybody was being told this but we got strict rules you cannot even speak to each other not even in the home without another person there. Because you it's cannot, your spouse. No. Mm -hmm. You cannot touch without each supervision. other. You cannot. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess I that means we're going to commit fornication or something. I if we're in the same room and we don't have somebody there, watch us. <laughs> we're, we're, wow. yeah, I, mean, I don't remember all of the guess, rules that he laid down, but I remember kind of after sitting there just rigidly. Oh shoot! There's you know space. Making sure there was space between. So him sadly, and... our youngest, yeah. because hopefully he wasn't old enough to understand everything we were talking about, he became what we called the PT, parent tender. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh my word. I mean, because how do you raise kids without like discussing their behaviors and stuff not right in front of them? It was yeah. so difficult. It put us both in the most difficult situation. You know, because what I was starting to say is we were sitting there. You know, and the guy, he's sitting there giving us all these rules, and I'm sitting here, okay, there's six inches between me and Jeff, and I'm slowly sliding over like, hell, I might touch him. I literally, we literally got told as far as to brush against his shoulder. Yep. Would condemn us in a, in a communication. And, no, and so I became very fearful, not because I didn't want to brush his shoulders against Jeff or communicate with him, because I knew already what it was like to lose my family. I yep. already knew. And I already Same. watched families get taken and married to somebody else every day, every day. 
And, they and so like, nobody told me that, but there's that fear. Just and so if I can describe, there was a couple of times where we went together as a family on little tiny outings, even though we were in this condition, so to speak, just to try to do something with our kids. With all of our toys got taken away, yeah, um, you toys. couldn't play and everything anymore. Like, okay, well, we can at least go for a hike or something. And there was a couple of instances where she falls down. And as a protector, as a husband, as someone who cares and loves her, that is the absolute worst thing in the world to have your spouse fall and not be able to help. That was hard, extremely hard. And like scream for one of the kids, help your mother quick, you know, and that was extremely difficult for me to go through. I don't even know where to begin to, to even try to understand that. Uh, thankfully, I mean, not thankfully. I was going to say thankfully I wasn't even there, but now I mean, well, I, I thankfully look, I'm glad you weren't there. Yeah, yes, but I have a lot of family that were, that are, that still are, and it's 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 one of those things that's very difficult. I'm thankful that I have the life I have now, but I'm also extremely fearful for the life of my loved ones that are still a part of it, and that were definitely a part of it during this time that you speak of, and probably were dealing with the same type of situation. So as time went on, when I'm, I'll try to wrap this up because I don't, we don't have a lot of time to, to tell everything. There's so much to tell. We could literally talk for days. Um, so as time went on, um, things progressed so that there were people getting sent away right and left. Um, we had the first actual lady get sent away and and things like that happen. And so we had member, non-member going on. And in our case, um, as time progressed, they said, okay, at first, um, the members can only eat member food. The non-members can only eat non-member yeah. food. So we're in the household and, and now you have to create two different meals. Yes. On top of the load you already have. Can you give examples? From schooling your kids. Yeah, can you give examples of like what a member meal would include and what a non-member meal would so include? So basically it means that member food is uh, food that you get from the member storehouse. Non-member food is the food you get from the non-member storehouse. And this is where the food stamp fraud came in because you were supposed to take your food stamp, so to speak, and go down and, bu and buy food and donate it to whichever storehouse you belong to, whether member I or non-member. I didn't realize there were two different storehouses. Yes. yes. Wow. There were two different meetings. There was non-member at first, non-member meetings, which at first basically Lyle would come in and all right, you dadgum sinners, you need to repent and be more fervent and do better. And I know you're all just terrible fornicators and bad adulterous people. And and he was telling us this in meeting. I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess we are. I, well, I, I don't know where that's coming from, but well, I okay, I guess I better think deep into my life and make sure I'm not thinking that way and doing that way. And Right, and I had a bit of a shock because I had my uh, daughter as a non-member, and so I would have to go to the meetings with her because I'd need to take her. I think she was like 10, and they were telling us what the non-members were, and like she was an evil person. Now, I mean, they were rough, rough to the non-members. Talking in that meeting, I was like, some of these words they're telling my daughter she was, I didn't particularly think about your point of view, but I was thinking of her, it was like, she probably don't even know what fornification is. She don't even know what terrible things she's done. And she just comes home all confused. Why am I the only kid singled out? And Did I just had such a shock in that meeting, like... So... Like you're saying that yeah. to children. Did well, and, and there was such a difference in... Wild, the way he spoke in the member meeting, he was just so kind and loving and... And, and uh, I would say almost charismatic. Yeah. And then you go to the member meeting and I'm like, holy non cow, yeah, the non-member, excuse me. He was just ripping them, ripped down. And I don't know, you know, I think I've only went like twice to those, but. And what kind of like emotional, oh sorry, gosh. what kind of emotional abuse to tell children that they're not worthy? Like yeah, children, right. innocent children, right. to say you're not worthy is, it's such, a mental game, oh, yeah. mental control, yeah, and right. trying to make I people feel guilty yeah. of stuff. I literally even remember telling her, you know what, I'm probably going to have to give you away. I will choose this sister to give you to. 
and her just scared as hell. So let me At tell. She's gonna have yes. Let me tell where this is yeah, coming from because we were told that um, because of the member non-member because of the different food situation that there would come a time of a complete separation where all members would live together, all non-members would live together, which. Um, ultimately is what happened and yeah, that, thankfully the by the time it did then our other children who were non-members had become members and so I was the only non-member yeah. and so um, everybody moved on as members and went and lived somewhere else and I got moved into a men's house of repentance is what it became hmm. yeah. and I lived there for a time and it was an absolute hell hole to be yeah. exact it's, it was just horrible yeah. where we were told that the member mothers who were coming to take care of their member children or member boys in our case because this was a men's house of repentance that if we were still supposed to have class and follow the schedule but the member mothers had more priesthood authority than us so-called men because we were just non-members and no good and so they go, could decide who got to say prayer and all of this stuff and that if the my member mother spoke we were supposed to do what they said and all of this kind of stuff it literally added to what we were already feeling because of going to the non-member meetings that she described of being right. so beat down now we're beat down way even worse yeah and that's what i was going to say as a member now we're being told look these guys are non-members you cannot associate with them and then having i don't remember any direct exact quotes what we're being told but we knew that the evil, the murderers, or the people that were the worst of worst were non-members. Because wow. if you were a non-member, I mean, that was worse than if you'd have never been in the church now. Now worse than if you had never had the opportunity to be born into the church, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was all mind playing. It's definitely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But here, I was going to say, not only does it cause such dramatic pressure on the children, but him as the father in the home, he became nothing. I mean, he was treated like dirt. I mean, like even the kids were kind of like, we don't even dare respect him because we're going to be judged. Everybody just was kind of assuming they had done something pretty bad, you know, especially right. when they're being told, you know, you had been, yeah. something very evil's happened. And I mean, I, I just assumed everybody had murdered somewhere, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Someone's that it, got ridiculous. That it, so like, the assumption was like some kind of murder, like yeah. right, right. But that was he. he or some often, terrible scene. He mm -hmm. often pointed to that, like literally said it. Um, we would hear it through through Lyle, of course. And Lyle. So we should point out Lyle is Warren's brother, right. Lyle Jess, yes. and, he, and was he was the bishop, bishop at the time. Right. Okay, right. And then even to kind of back up a little bit on that, for a bit, Lyle was taken out and sent away himself. And what we seen when he came back was he was very, very hard, harsh. Now he had threats to him to stand up and do exactly what Warren wanted to. Wow. So it became... So even the second in command of the church yeah, basically yeah. still lived in fear yes. of whatever and I, Warren and I was going to And Correct. I see him... And all of this Get Warren's behind bars when this is all yes, going on, by the way. After. Which right. is just incredible from an outside yeah. perspective. It's incredible that a man behind bars for the things that he was there for, for, you know, rape of minors. I mean, these yeah. horrible things that he's back there. And to be able to main, maintain control, like you said, he did a lot of groundwork. Yes, he did. A yeah, lot absolutely. of groundwork yeah. to be able to have that kind of loyalty, yeah. even with the situation that he he's, was in. He spent so, a good, solid 12 years mind control. That's an evil yes. mastermind type very, of thing. Very, very like absolutely. That's evil mastermind. So we spent a whole entire year this way of them being members, living somewhere else. We could not have any contact. Yeah. And yeah. I was a non-member and I couldn't, to talk to my family i would see my, him in town didn't know own, if i even dared wave to him yeah. because that might be a sin my own babies that's what i was gonna say my own babies would my two and three year olds would be in trouble for waving at the oh my goodness town. we ran into him at the park one day and, and we were in so bad of trouble for that because they seen their dad my oldest was scared to death that we would all be kicked out and so how did, how did you get in trouble? Were you convinced to, to tell people everything that you did, even if it, you knew it would get you in trouble? Like or, how would well, someone know in, that you okay, saw Okay, so at the we, park? we met at the park, which Sorry. neither one of us knew we were going to be there and we weren't going there to meet each other. Um, it just so happened yes. 
that somebody, we did, and somebody apparently reported because um, Lyle had trucks. people who were going around town with trucks and Take cameras pictures. and mm. taking pictures and giving them to him. They yeah. didn't ask, yeah, they you know, what are you doing? Is, didn't ask what happened. No, we were just Obviously, it's just judgment and assumed that we had talked to each other somehow, mm. some way, and decided to meet at the park and we're going to see each other. Wow. And so, because it's yeah. a great crime, because I'm a non-member, to see my kids. And and as a parent, what about parental rights and everything? Oh, that doesn't mean anything. And and I point that out to as we lead up to um, some things that we're going to talk about later. But I want to point out that um, law doesn't matter. It's priesthood law, period. Um, as far as regular so-called Gentile law, it doesn't mean anything. Police doesn't mean anything because we are um, living the laws of God, which are so much higher and above the law and above everything else. And so what's what Warren says that matters the absolute most, and everybody has to comply with that. Right. And controlling, having that kind of control over us gave them all control and power over the kids. The kids at that point, called children, of course, but they became their commodities, their property. But, you know, this is before we were moved out or kicked out of the community. We had no say about our kids anymore. We felt right. threatened. Jeff felt threatened, especially as a non-member, what his kids might talk about because then he could lose his family. I mean, I now your own children become your threat. Your own family, your own neighbors, everybody was a threat to each other. And so you're the one who raised he, them to do that too. That must have been an interesting in thing ways. as a parent to be like, they're only going to turn me in because they are doing what I've taught them to do almost. Like what the church has taught them to do and what I raised and, them And up. I just want to point out too, at this point, um, there isn't anyone who is going to go through this unless there is some kind of golden carrot that is being held in front of you. Right. So as a non-member, oh, cool. that was my golden carrot. If it was a cut and dried, um, you're just no good, you're, you're a non-member, you're never going to get anywhere, I, there's you're no way in the world out. I yeah. would have stuck it out because what can I do? They've, they've cut everything off and they're obviously going to reassign my family and blah, blah, blah. But no. They held out a golden carrot that, oh, if you get fervent enough and, and are good enough, and, and we were supposed to be writing our letters every uh, every week, or every, some, and there sometimes I wrote a letter every day to the bishop to try to say, um, I believe in Warren, and I'm so faithful, and all of this kind of stuff, because wow. I'm trying to get this golden carrot, trying to get be fervent enough and be good enough to be what back was with my family. What was it? Being a member? Yeah, my like golden family. carrot was okay. to, if I'm a member, at least oh. I can associate with my family. Whether because then he can I can have, I don't care about marital relations because nobody's having those at this point. I don't have care about that at, at all. But what I care about is to become a member so I can at least associate with my kids, at least talk to my wife. I mean, that mm. that's a pretty good golden carrot because there's so many things taken away from us. The amount of power and control that they had over the people that Warren specifically had over the people is just crazy because as, uh, obviously you're a great dad and husband and, and you would want nothing more than to be with your family. Exactly. But because of the control, the mind control, you were willing to give it all up for the hope that you could get back eventually right. mm -hmm. instead of instead right. of just saying no. But if you said no, it was all taken. Exactly. Yeah, it was everything, the amount of control over, like you said, even but, your children would turn against you, against oh yeah. you, if, if you weren't if, doing even what Warren wanted. If, if I would have decided, okay, this is nonsense, I'm done, I, it would be just like what we're dealing with um, in the FLDS right now where they don't care about the law. Mm -hmm. They don't care about parental rights or anything. They are hiding and keeping children away from their parents because uh, Warren has them so scared that if you even talk to them then you're you're not going to um, make it to heaven you're you're going to go to hell just because you so, talk to your parent who is a non-member and and they are now unbelievers they don't believe anymore and so if you talk to them it's over for you you're not going to ever see God again or even to the point that if they come up to you and you talk to them and you respond then it's over 
Mm -hmm. Like if I was to go up to some of my And so family. you literally lose everything by not complying. And that's part of the, like I say, the golden carrot. Yeah. Right. So Jeff, at that point, you're a non-member. Were you able to earn the member status? No. <laughs> uh, that was the golden carrot or the lie that was put yeah. before me. But I don't believe that. It was ever intended. It was, it was never, never going to be a possibility. It never was in the plan. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I kind of have to go back a little bit. Because honestly, for me, um, let me just Go say ahead. this real quick. Honestly, for me, um, when I became a non-member, I thought, okay, um, I have been through this before. I survived 63 days. I'll, I know the formula. I know what to do. I will be extremely fervent and do everything that's asked of me, and I will be a member in short order. Not a big deal. And so I did that. Right. Did it work this time? Absolutely well, I, not. I remember you saying, like, even after we had lost the kids and everything and to a point that you were like i will spend a lifetime if it takes to yep. get these back and i felt the same way i don't care what it takes i will be in this condition for the rest of my life to get to have my kids wow and my husband you know not only once again not only in this life but even if you like you said even if you had to endure this entire yeah. life that way Right. To have the hope of being with him in the afterlife right. as well right. is a big thing that was and pushed I, on. I think, and that's the kind of control. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think it was even kind of lost in the formula. At least for me it was. I didn't even hardly think about the afterlife. Oh, really? Because it was so, yeah. I right. wanted to be so good Same. here Survival. and now where you will mm -hmm. die now. Yeah. I mean, it got pretty strict. But I was going to back up a little bit because as a member, it wasn't easy either. Because when we when we were called in to be a member, they just called us up and you're coming to a meeting. And they brought you in and baptized you and then took us in a room and told us what we had just, you know, been baptized for and what we had just... Yeah, these are the covenants you just covenants made. Covenants we had just made without, with consent, God. without consent. You, you just you yeah, know, consented to And all I this. remember one of my sisters, a little more open-minded about it, saying to me, she's like, they didn't even ask me. And I, and I just sat there kind of shocked, looked at her. My first thought was, oh, my God, don't even talk about that or say that or you'll be sent, right. kicked out. But then as I thought about it through the years, I allowed myself to think about that a little bit. I was like, you know what? None of us would ever ask. And then suddenly we had all of these rules that were so strict. I mean, I was immediately commanded to go home with me and my children that had been baptized. And we could tell Jeff nothing about it. And there was these certain foods we could not eat. Well, we get home and he has a dinner put out and all of me and the kids are sitting there like, um, and he's like, what's wrong? How come you can't eat? Are you, can you not eat my food yet? You know, and we're just sitting there like, guess, because we were so, supposed to not tell you one little word mm -hmm. that got uh, told. So imagine me as a non-member, you know, how much more did that cause me to tear myself down, to beat myself up because, yeah. oh my gosh, I am just a terrible sinner. They can't even eat the, this food that I work really hard to prepare for them anymore. Yeah. Wow. Um, I must be just and a horrible was, person. He was making such and an I was putting such a tremendous oh effort God. forth for yeah. everybody. Like and, like I said, I knew the formula. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. And he's, but, you know, he looks at me and he's like, hey, you know, what's going on? What is the deal? And I'm just like, I'm silent. Yeah, I'm you're supposedly just, was, the dad, but nobody can tell me anything. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever played the silent treatment? It not fun. Yeah, it was. It was, <laughs> yeah. and that went on for a couple of years. This is yeah. we're kind of stepped back a little bit, I guess. And okay, then so we were separated. step back forward, separated for a year. Then yeah. they called a special meeting and said, "Well, this isn't working too good, so we're going to put all the families together. Everybody's non-members right, now, good. and we're going to do um, interviews again, and we're just going to start this all over again." And wow. So go move back with your families. Yeah. This is what we were talking. Go move back. And go, we'll go get, get you houses and everything and so back. you can live together and everything Make great. Make a so. call and, let, and to let the, the crew know that you need to move back together yeah. within a few hours. Nobody can live together. There was one night. And nobody. There was one so night that I slept so... in the same house with her under the same roof when I slept with yeah. my boys in the boys' room. Yeah. And that was it. And then the next morning when we called, no, that is not to happen. You are supposed to have your own cabin or your own place. And, and then it was just sleep changed. under and, separate roofs. And a lot of wow. that times the changes didn't come like we get a call and we get told. A lot of times the changes were literally like we heard the neighbors who heard the neighbors who know the neighbors who were not supposed to gossip, but you never heard what the rules were if you didn't get it handed down. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you were kind of one of the families that weren't doing good enough or elite enough, you didn't get the rules, and then everybody just looked at you like, 
why the hell are you eating yeah. potatoes? What's wrong yeah. with you? You're oh going to really God. miss out. So there was so much judging, so, so much back and forth. We this lived in this nasty. condition for a year um, as yeah. time went on. Then yeah. um, a couple of my condition, boys. Condition, what was the condition? So we were, The condition was is that they moved me to an apartment yeah. um, and I was living by myself even though I was supposed to be at my where my family was so he could at be five o'clock in the morning the I could be again. the dad again I could teach class again so to speak and indoctrinate my children Let's and help encourage the kids and help encourage so. the kids to, to, to do what Warren says and to be like Warren says so I have to and, back up just a little here okay. for just a minute but so my daughter that was about 12, she came to me just bursting in tears one day and saying, I have got to call the bishop. I cannot live without my dad anymore. I mean, it just broke my heart. So she's like, came to me, you know, I, I've got to be able to call the bishop and tell him I just can't live without him anymore. And I was like, you know, I can't tell her not to call somebody above me. That would have been, I could have been in trouble if I told her mm -hmm. you can't call. So I was like, okay, you know, you can use my phone and you can call him and, so she got on the phone and literally because she was a child they let him through it was near I, you know i thought she'll never get to talk to him i can call for a half a year and i don't get to talk to the bishop wow. but a child calls they immediately get through interesting what's the problem okay what can we change here what is your parent doing so yeah. as a parent mm -hmm. you didn't get to get through it was they yeah. if you were a parent calling kind of got off subject but it's important to know that if you're a parent calling Another person would take down what you had to say, and then they would decide if it went to the bishop or not. Interesting. Okay. So if it was something taboo, you know, enough, then of course it would go. But if not, if it's just a common question, then you never, you never really got an answer you wanted anyway. But anyway, my daughter was able to get through and literally talk to him, and she told him, "I can't live this way any longer." This is. She was crying her eyes out on the phone, and I don't know if it kind of touched Lyle at that point, but. He told her, I want you to go and write down exactly what you told me in a letter to to Uncle Warren. Yeah. So, oh, wow. And, and so I was like, okay, I will help you do that. And I helped her write that down and get it, send it in. Whether Warren ever seen that or not, I don't know. But within a few days, they put all the families back together. Hmm. Wow. After she sent that letter. So that was kind of an interesting. So it may have already been in the so work, and Lyle might have already been back together. Like, which, it, in everybody's case, so this meant was our, that the right. dads had to be under yeah. separate roofs. So he lived in a different home live, across town. Correct. But he could come over and be with the family now. Oh, okay. and so which had now been, I could eat with them right. and everything. But at night, I had to go back to my little room. But that it, I mean, we felt like it was just joyous because after not Absolutely. being able to see him for five, six years, whatever. Well, it was, it was a year. It was a year. But from the first separations and talking, well, and I mean, right. it was just True. so much chaos for five, six years, and then finally he can come back, and the kids were just ecstatic here. Wow. We can actually go do something fun now, you know. So we lived in that so, condition, so to speak, for a year. Um, as time rolled on, two of my boys ended up becoming non-members-ish more. Everybody was non-members, but they ended up being moved with me into my little apartment. Oh, yeah, actually, you're kind of getting mixed up a little bit. Because before you came and moved back, they became non-members. You oh, got to go right. live in the apartment right. with you. And then when we got back together, then we got the call. That's right. So you can tell about the call being kicked out. Okay, so, so then, what, the yes, we were uh, lived like that for a year where I could now associate with my family, but I had to sleep under a separate roof, and I lived across town in an uh, apartment. We did. And then did, uh, all of a sudden one day we got on a call, uh, I got a call that said, you need to bring your wife to the church house or the meeting house, whatever you want to call it. Everybody in the community knew what that meant. And mm -hmm. if you're I thought, great, you know, I've been trying to be fervent and everything. We're going to, I get to become a member and we're going to be back together. And she's like, no, we're going to get sent away. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And so we went there and sure enough, yes. that's what Lyle said. And Lyle told us, yeah, he really said, you know. are being sent away. I don't really want to say what his reason was, but he says, you are being sent away because you did this. And we we're both looked like, at each other and we're like, we, haven't done, we haven't done that. And he says, well, you're just being sent away anyway. You don't want to question authority, do you? And I'm just being thorough. He's mm -hmm. first so basically, I have to cover my backside so that I don't lose my family. So you get to lose yours because I'm being thorough. That's what he told us. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So how quickly does that take effect? You go to the, you go to we the, the, the meeting house. Oh, you're told. 
What is your next step from we there? We were what supposed to, I guess, um, we were supposed to just go like that day or the next day, <laughs> I suppose. But for, in my case, I had a whole business that I was trying, um, a whole bunch of things that I had promised different people that I would do. Let's just put it that way. And I had to try to get all of those promises well, taken care is. of like right now mm -hmm. because I didn't want to just go and be sent away and take advantage of all of these people. That well, had, he was doing the mechanics for the storehouse. So yeah. he was the mechanic and he had five cars ripped apart. So he let through, you asked, Lyle, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, do with I these just... vehicles? Do I just walk away? And he's like, no, you go put things in order and then go. And and so it ended up taking me two weeks to get everything figured out and put together and what I was going to do and how was I, what was it going to take with me and how are we going to arrange for our kids to have a place because the kids belong to the priesthood. You can't take them with you. We were told wow. that. So and yeah. during those, sorry, so during this, these two weeks, were you allowed to communicate with your children? Yes. We, okay. we were. And we, and we were told that there would be no communication yeah. afterwards. And we were also told by Lyle, oh, it's only going to be a couple of months. So to mm. answer that question, communicating with them, we were. And we thought it was fine to just, you know, somewhat be the normal parent until we went. But finding out later on, when we hear the backstory from our kids, they were getting a lot of trouble from the caretaker a lot of pressure from the other moms that were supposed to take them because we were still talking to them. Oh, okay. one, one, one of my daughters, I told her, hey, you can come over and stay in the house with me because we, we had to immediately move the kids out that day, the minute we found out. Okay. The kids had to move out and move into another home. I think it may have taken a couple days. But Did you have any input out. into what home they were going to be put into or was it, um, were they assigned? As yeah, far as what us. home, no. As far as um, who they were to be under, yes. Right. And so we thought that we made a good choice at the time and come to find out we couldn't have picked a worse devil, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't the know that yeah. because they're so much like Warren that they could just be so sweet up yeah. front and they're just so saintly and sweet. But behind the scenes, they are the absolute worst people in the world. Wow. So I, probably, yeah. I, honestly, if we would have put our kids in the middle of L.A., in the worst neighborhood you could find, they probably would have been better off than where they were, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. So your kids get moved. Yeah. They get put into a different home. You guys are taking those two weeks. Was it common for the husband and wife to be sent away together? Um, kicked out at the same time, yes. But yes. we weren't sent together. They were like, oh. you go and live in separate homes. Oh. And I was so specific because I want to do everything right. Can he move me out? And we were never told that we can communicate. In fact, I think I, I did. I brought it up. I asked Al, well, can we, can I still talk to him? I mean, what do I do if my car breaks down? Am I going to be able to communicate with him? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's no problem. And he said, but you still take we, care of her. Yeah, Make sure she's taken yeah, care exactly. of. Yeah, exactly. But we were to live separate. Which we did, but then, of course, once we are out there, people that had been sent away also judged us because we were still talking. Oh, so wow. it was just, there was so much, so much uh, people's opinions I, of how things should be. One of the things that we thought was so yeah. ironic and kind of hilarious, which we you know laughed at, um, I, we were trying to find a, a place that we could rent for her, right. and so we went, so to speak, as a couple to go and talk to this lady that was renting this place, and we were laughing after the fact because she told us, wow, you are the most stable couple that I have oh, ever oh, seen. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, you have, oh, no, you have idea, no idea. You have no, no idea. idea. Our whole damn world has been ripped apart. Yeah. We literally drove up to her house with me in the back seat because I wasn't allowed to sit in the front seat by him. We might uh, fornicate in the, the front seat. I mean, <laughs> terrible that things was, can happen, I guess. I don't was, know. That was one wow. of the rules. You could sit in the same in the passenger seat or, you know. And, and so, you know, that just blew me away. I'm like, we seem stable. We have lost everything in this world. We're homeless. We have no money. We have, you know, our kids are thousands of miles away. We have no idea where they are, who they're with, and we're stable. And we can't talk to them, no contact. No, but and we they... had learned, we had learned, you, we, you, we learned, took, Years and years and years of trained under Warren now to just have that perfect keep sweet I was, I was, smile. I was going to say keep sweet and yep. obey. And just look like and everything yeah. is fine. Have the hope. And keep the hope we that you're only going to be the there for a couple months. golden carrot in front of us right. so that we'll keep going. And the honest truth was is they wanted us to be sending the money in. 
And we were been told by different people that people that would go check the mail, they would just go look through and if it looked like there was money in there, they'd go for that. And then all the other letters didn't really matter so much. So we could write letters to a certain address and we could call a phone number, but nobody ever answered the phone. It was always leave a message and write a letter. We had no yeah. communication. They, they took our, our kids' phones, our children, they took their phones from them and we couldn't talk to them and we were supposed to stay in that condition um, be perfectly obedient and everything and then in a couple of months then we'll get this phone call yeah. and we'll get to that come is, back and yeah. be with our kids and if you do anything wrong in the meantime talk to the wrong people or anything or you're seen in the wrong place or whatever yeah. then you'll lose out and you'll never get your yeah. kids back and we're just going to keep them they're part of the priesthood they belong to the priesthood you have no say it's obviously ugh, there's so much <laughs> to yeah. unpack yes. and it's so heartbreaking to hear like this is kind of the beginning of the end for you right. guys right wow. luckily we have the pleasure of having their one son that was separated from them at this time be with us and get to share what it was like for him on the flip yeah, side of it of the child's perspective dealing with all of this that was going on while you guys were forced out of the community and uh, so looking forward to unpacking a little bit of that as well yep so stay tuned for that and we will be back soon. Thank you for being here. We'll be back soon. Yeah.